The Japan Rail Company, commonly referred to as the JR Company, has been taking a real beating since the beginning of 2023. It started with the bad news of train fares going up across the board due to inflation. Then the JR price itself followed up with its own price increase, or more like price surge, making it no longer viable for many tourists. And then, only a couple months later, the JR Company released a statement that they will be discontinuing the unregistered Pasmo and Suica cards indefinitely due to a semiconductor chip shortage. And while I recently made a video covering that the registered PASMO and Suica cards were still a viable alternative, as of August 2nd, that is no longer the case. As the JR company updated their indefinite suspension to not just unregistered cards, but even the registered Suica and PASMO cards. And while losing the unregistered cards back in June was manageable, not having either option is actually quite concerning, as it could make your future trip to Japan rather difficult to navigate if you don't already have one of these IC cards. So with all that being said, today I'm going to show you every option available to you so you can enjoy Japan with minimal complications. And stick around to the end because the last two options will probably be the easiest way to get around Japan for everyone. And a little side note, if you haven't noticed yet, I'm in Hawaii right now, not Japan. But I am dedicated to keep you up to date on all things Japan, even if I'm away on business. Anyways, let's get started so I can get you one step closer to a stress-free vacation in Japan. Number one, old Pasmo and Suica cards. If you visited Japan in the past few years and kept your old old PASMO or Suica card, well, you're in luck. All PASMO and Suica cards will be usable for up to 10 years after your last transaction. So if you do have an old IC card laying around your house and it hasn't been over a decade since your last visit, make sure to dig it up and bring it with you on your next trip, as it will save you from dealing with this whole situation entirely. But if you don't have an old Suica card or you have a friend that's coming along that's going to need one, well, don't worry because there are still plenty of options to choose from to help resolve this problem. Number two. Seishun 18 Kipu. Otherwise known as the JR Pass Lite, the Seishun 18 Kipu is one of the most underrated ways to get around Japan. First, this pass is very cheap for what you get, only costing 12,000 yen for a five day pass or about only 2,400 yen per day, which allows unlimited train use on all local JR lines. Not only that, but this pass is extremely flexible, allowing you to transfer it between friends or even use it for multiple people at the same time. But side note, if you do use the pass for multiple people, they will charge one day per person, so keep that in mind. The flexibility of the Seishun 18 Kipu alone is what makes this pass so worth it, as you can get one pass for five people and easily use up all the days so there's nothing left over. Not only can it be redeemed with multiple people, but it can also be used non-consecutively. That means you could redeem it on a day you anticipate you'll be using the train a lot and wait to redeem the pass again for another day of heavy train use. You won't be forced to use all five days in a row like you would with the JR Pass. But like the JR Pass, it is unlimited local train use. So if you plan it well, you could travel to some pretty unique places that would usually be pretty expensive to get to otherwise. The only real downside to the Seishun 18 Kipu is the limited window of when you can purchase and redeem it. The Seishun 18 Kipu is only available during the busy travel seasons of Japan. So if you don't arrive to buy or use the ticket in these windows, then you'll have to find another option to get around Japan. But if you are in Japan when this travel option is available, you can easily get it out of most Shinkansen machines. Number three, other IC cards throughout Japan. Although the PASMO and Suica cards are being indefinitely suspended, there are still several other regions throughout the country that have been unaffected by this microchip shortage, at least for now, which I'll touch on more in a bit. For example, you can purchase the Aikoka train card, which is commonly used in the western region of Japan, the Sugoka card for the Kyushu region, and many other types of IC cards. And similarly, to the Suica and PASMO cards, any Japanese IC card can be used on most transportation systems throughout Japan. So no matter what area you head to, as long as you get your hands on any of these IC cards, you'll be able to use Japan's extensive transportation system no problem. However, as mentioned earlier, there is always the chance that these IC cards might eventually get affected by the microchip shortage as well. Number four, the electronic Suica card. If you aren't a big fan of using physical IC cards or just want to flex your fancy tech, then you can use the Suica app on your iPhone. The Suica card for the iPhone can be found within the Apple Wallet app and is really easy to use. All you need to do is go into your Apple Wallet, look for the Suica or PASMO option, and then add whatever money you want to your card balance. And now you can use it as if you had a physical Suica card. Just a side note, you can only charge your electronic Suica with MasterCard or American Express, so keep that in mind. Unfortunately for Android users like myself, if you did not purchase your Android phone in Japan, you will not be able to use the electronic Suica. 
last week. Of. Even though I'm a big Android fan, this is one of the only times that I'll admit that the iPhone has a little bit better utility than Android phones. But that's fine. I like using the physical card anyways. And in my opinion, the physical card is better because you can take it home with you as a cool souvenir. Anyways, if you don't have an iPhone or don't have MasterCard or American Express, don't worry because there are plenty of options left on this list to allow you to travel Japan with ease. Number five, JR Pass. As most of you might already know, the JR Pass is an absolute bargain for anyone traveling to multiple cities during your visit to Japan. However, due to recent events, this option might become a thing of the past in only a few months. But we'll get to that part in a second. The JR Pass gives you unlimited train use both on local JR lines and Shinkansen's for a one-time payment, which is dependent on how long you intend to use the pass. However, starting in October, that is all going to change for this pass. Since I just released a video about the JR Pass, I will just briefly touch on the update in this video. Basically, the JR Pass is almost doubling in price with no real added benefits to it. The only real perks coming with it is the ability to take a faster Shinkansen option for an additional fee on top and some tourist discounts that aren't solidified yet. Doesn't sound all that great anymore, does it? If you want to see the full breakdown of why the JR Pass is no longer viable for most tourists and see all the alternatives I mentioned about the JR Pass, then check out my video right here. Number six, train tickets. If all else fails and you don't have any of the above to get around Japan yet, don't worry. Getting a physical ticket is a viable way to access the trains, even though it might not be the easiest solution. But I'll give you a few pointers on how to use the tickets and ticket machines so I can make this process as painless as possible for you. First, find a machine that has the label ticket above it. Next, determine the station you need to travel to for your next destination. After you find the station you need to go to, insert the amount of money required into the machine and the ticket should pop right out. Again, you should really only use the tickets if you have no other way to get around Japan yet, as it is pretty inefficient since you have to get a ticket every time you use the train, especially when you consider the next two options, which are easily the most viable solutions for everyone. Number seven, Welcome Suica. The Welcome Suica is a type of IC card designed specifically for tourists. Unlike the typical Suica or Pasmo card, which are mostly a boring, plain, gray background with pink or green text, the Welcome Suica is a special red card with Sakura blossoms decorating the front. This Suica card is perfect for tourists as the design is very unique and eye-catching, making for a great souvenir. While you can normally pick up the Welcome Suica at several JR centers throughout Tokyo, due to the chip shortage, you are only able to pick them up at the Haneda and Narita Airport JR service counters right now. And JR will only be issuing out one card per person for the time being. While there are quite a few good reasons to get this card as a tourist, especially right now, there is one caveat. With it being designed for tourists, it will expire 28 days after you first activate that card. So if you plan on staying any longer than that, then you might want to consider a couple other options to go along with this card. Or you could buy the next option on this list as well, as it is arguably better than the Welcome Suica for a few reasons. Number eight, Pasmo Passport. The Pasmo Passport, similar to the Welcome Suica, is a special IC card specifically designed for tourists, lasting only 28 days from its first use. However, unlike the Welcome Suica card, Pasmo Passport not only has a few extra benefits to offer, but also has more areas where you can purchase it, making it much more convenient for tourists to get. With the Pasmo Passport, you can get discounts at select stores and restaurants that are mentioned on their website. Although there aren't a lot of discounts available, it is still more than the Welcome Suica, which virtually offers no discounts at all. Not only does it have extra benefits the Welcome Suica doesn't have, you can still pick it up in several locations throughout Tokyo. In fact, the Pasmo Passport is so useful, only tourists can buy this card, as you must show you have a visitor stamp on your passport. Not only that, but this card is definitely worth keeping as a souvenir, as this unique design stands out from any of the normal IC cards. Check out the Pasmo Passport website if you want more information on this card and to see all the things it has to offer. I hope I could help you navigate your way through these crazy times and make your upcoming trip to Japan a little less stressful. Hopefully this will all be over sooner rather than later. And if it does, you can count on me to let you know the good news. Either way, if you have more questions about the Japan travel news and drama, let me know in the comments section below. I really do reply to every comment. Like this video if you found it useful, subscribe for more content about all things Japan, and check out my affiliate links in the description below for when you plan your next trip to Japan. All right, that's gonna do it. And until then, I'll see you next time.